And I, I, I will wrap up on this. I did want to take you back as well because we didn't talk about this last time. Can you take me back to North Carolina? Not just the football side, but the basketball side. I'm interested in what was it like to play for Roy Williams to start off? And for the record, for people, people that don't know, you played in uh, 25 career games at the University of North Carolina as a basketball player, not just as a football player, uh, over two seasons. Yeah. I mean, football, it was... My, my class coming in for football was the changing of the culture. Um, we came in and we began to get things moving and kind of getting football back on track to where it was when Mac Brown was there with like Julius Peppers and, and, and you know, Carl Torbush and those guys with the coach then. And it was fun. It was fun. I was so young and immature when it came to football. I thought I was the hottest thing since sliced bread. And I didn't know Jack. I was so oblivious. And I remember like watching, you know, the Miami teams run around and I'm like, these dudes are official. And the Florida State teams, I'm like, these dudes are official. Um, the early Clemson teams. Uh, and then you go over to basketball, which was, which would help me mature because I went from football was I was a star. And then I go over to basketball and I'm the eighth, ninth guy off the bench and I'm playing in front of lottery picks. And the experience was so fun because the level of competition every single day was so high. And you and I got a chance to challenge guys like Rashad McCants and challenge guys like Raymond Felton. And to watch that journey, for us to go on that journey, uh, the biggest thing that Coach Williams would say to us, he would always say that that year we won the national championship that we were the most talented team in the country, while everyone in the media kept saying we just had the most talent. We just we were just most talented. We were we were the better team. Us in Illinois. D Brown, uh, Darren Williams, Luther Head and all those guys. It was a ride that was like amazing. Amazing. And we were rock stars no matter wherever we went. You go on the road, Tar Heels everywhere. And as, as we got more and more into the championship and then after we won it, it was St. Louis. Let's just say there's things that I can't say on camera that happened in St. Louis. We had Lil Wayne. We had Nelly. We had Jay-Z. That's who we were partying with after winning a national championship. Those stories you cannot tell. <laughs> and and uh, uh, I believe I have it here. So, so Raymond Felt is on that team. Sean May is on that team. Marvin Williams and Rash Rashard McCants is on that team. So there's four, four NBA guys on that team. More than that, you had guys like Jawad Williams who went to the NBA, uh, spent some time with the Cleveland, the Cleveland Cavaliers with early LeBron James. Um, Jackie Manuel had a stint in the, in, in the NBA. Um, so we had about, we had, we had four lottery picks. Four lottery picks. But we had six guys who actually got time in the NBA off that roster. I think that year we had like the number two, five, 10, and 13th pick. Marvin, Marvin was two, right? Marvin was two, Raymond was either four or five, Sean was 10, and Rashad was like 13. <laughs> yeah. It is, uh, looking back at that, is that even more surreal than your NFL career with the Cowboys, have, actually winning a national championship? Hmm. It, it was a great ride. It, it really was. It's one of the greatest sports moments of my life to know that one game and you're done and we didn't lose. And there were some tight games and there were some blowouts that we had. Um, that, that was a great ride. But being in the National Football League, that was a personal experience. Right? That, that journey getting there and, and having what little success that I did have there, that was a personal journey. And, and I hold that a little bit higher then I hold not much, but a little bit higher than, I, than, than the national championship. While that was fun and amazing, my journey from fourth and long to getting back into the league and just doing it, that, that to me, I hold a little bit of, of, a, of a higher regard. Does part of you ever wonder what would happen if you went the full hoops route? And as well, if, if you went to... I would have ended up overseas. Right. Well, I was going to say, if you went to... Cool. Well, here, I'm going to butter you up first here. Okay. So I have some stats here. So in your year two at North Carolina, your per 40-minute stats, 
he would have averaged 32 and a half points per game. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, listen. So my nickname, my nickname when I played basketball, and this was like the fans gave you nicknames, and they had shirts made. They called me Ho Po Ho, and it was it was Ho Po Ho stood for Hot Pocket Holly, because when I came in, ball was going up, I was shooting, so I was I was instant offense. I, I was like the microwave. I was like that. So there was no you knew the ball was going up when I got in. Um, had I stayed with basketball, I would have been a, I would have been a starter. I would have eventually made like once all those guys left. If I had come back and done it again, I would have been a starter. Four. Well, yeah, I was I was wondering like, did did, did part of you ever wonder like if I went to a smaller basketball school and was the starter, what what might have happened? Like, if I... nah, I had made my mind up. I had made my mind up that football was going to be the route, even though back was my first love. I just knew that. You know, I didn't want to be a point guard, and I wasn't a good enough scorer as a shooting guard to be considered, you know, six foot two, six foot three at that time um, to go into the league. I might have got a shot at the league, but I eventually probably would have ended up, ah, who knows, I might have been an NBA All Star. And then outside of the Jay Z, Lil Wayne party situation. Don't forget Nelly. Nelly was in, <laughs> we were in St. Louis. Shout out to Nelly. Tip drill. Oh wow. Yeah. Is, uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yes. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Is, is there a, is there a favorite story or memory that you could tell us about the national championship? Favorite story or memory? Hmm. I don't know if I have it off the top of the head. A favorite story or memory? From the national, or even just that season, so I'll, those guys. so I'll give you an example. So, we 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 yeah, this is a good story. Okay. We we're cruising through the season, but we have a couple of hiccups, right? We lost to St. Mary's early in the year. We lost to I think Florida State. I think we only had four losses that year. But we're to the point now where we're rolling. We win the ACC regular season, which is way harder than winning an ACC championship tournament. We win the ACC regular season. We actually don't even want to go and play in the ACC tournament, even though we know that you know we we we're, we're confident that we're already a number one seed. We're not sure if we're the number one overall seed, but we know that we're number one seed. We're really close to being number one overall seed. So the the the, the mood for us going to the ACC tournament was kind of like eh, whatever. And for some odd reason, this particular year, it's normally in Greensboro, which is literally a forty minute drive. It was in D.C for this year. I don't know, remember why it was. So we go to, to, to the ACC tournament, we, we, we have a bye. So we end up, we play the first game, I forget who we play, it might have been like Clemson or somebody like that. And we play horribly. We win, but we play horribly. Coach is livid. We're not playing defense, we're not communicating, we're not, play, we're not doing anything right. We're just like, whatever, we, can, we think we can just, we think we smile on our own self. So we get to play Georgia Tech in like the semis. This is when they had Jared Jack and Will Bynum. Will Bynum cooked, cooked us. I think he had like 32 or 33 or something like that. He was giving buckets to everybody. He's like, yo, you're going to have six. You're going to hold this eight. You're going to hold this 10. We were switching guys off him. Like, everybody that was on him, Raymond, Rashad, myself, Jackie. He was like, yo, everybody's going to hold a couple of these buckets. And we lose. Now, this is North Carolina. We travel in style. Charter planes, great meals. Coach is so mad. And I don't even know where he got a bus from. I don't know where he got this bus from. But he found a bus. And we drove home that night. We played the game. Now, we're usually, when we eat, we're, we're, we're five-star restaurants. We're, you know, catered food. He was so mad, we drove home on a bus from D.C. back to North Carolina, and he fed us Wendy's. Like, you had, like, a $9 limit to go to Wendy's. Like, what do you used to eat? Steaks. We drove back through the middle of the night to Carolina. And we get back to Chapel Hill and get off the bus, and before we get off the bus, he gets on, the, like, the little microphone, the bus overhead microphone, and he goes, your practice gear will be in your lockers. 
be on the floor in 20 minutes and I wouldn't be late if, you, if I were you. It's like five o'clock in the morning. We're like, what? What's happening? And we go and practice for like three hours. No balls. No sleep. No you're stuff no on the bus. Slept on the bus. And and we and for every mess up, if you didn't communicate, get on the line. And we had this thing called 33s and 55s. And so you have a 33, he puts 33 on the clock. A down back is one. You got three of them. Down back, down back, down back in 33 seconds. And if somebody didn't communicate, call out the screen on the line. If somebody didn't rotate over, on the line. We had no ball. We did all defensive drills for three hours. It was the worst practice I've ever been in in my basketball history. And at the time, I'm sure you were rattled or pissed about it. But looking back on it, is that the level of discipline and uh, accountability it takes to win championships? Yep. Because it, 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 it refocused us. It pissed us off. And it got us back to understanding the small things because we were cruising and it was it was it was from that point nothing but focus on the championship and we like I said we had some tough games we, we played a, uh, we played a Wisconsin team that was tough we played a Villanova team that was really tough they, that, that, that team was Randy Foy Alan Ray um, Kyle Larry they had the four guards and the big men you know, and they had a big man was six seven, six eight. So they spread you out, and Randy Foy and Alan Ray and Chris, Kyle Lowry was tearing us up. Philly guys. Philly guy. It was te- <laughs> well, two Philly guys and then a Jersey guy. Um, uh, uh, um, Randy Foy's from Jersey, my neck of the woods. Yeah. And so they were, and, and their point guard was Mike Nardi, from who was a really good friend of mine from literally my neighborhood. And it was a tough game. And if it wasn't for a controversial travel call, we might have lost. He traveled. <laughs> All right, Jesse. Uh, it's another great one. Yeah. New books. Really appreciate your time. Absolutely, brother. I appreciate you, man. Talk to you soon. Let's do it.